So as we established our five-year plan, we all as a collective had ideas of how we thought we could solve the problem of helping individuals who were seeking employment move out of either poverty or lower economic situations in terms of employment to successful employment and sustainable living wages. Um, and so we launched with that, right? But with bi-directional communication and the fact that we are collectively meeting regularly, we have the opportunity to learn as we grow and to iterate our programs so they more directly meet the needs of the clients we're all trying to serve. So success for the master plan for SkillPoint Alliance, I think, would be where the entire community of, of workforce providers, um, community partners has come together, and through our collaborative work, we have built a, a well-developed, robust talent pipeline for individuals in our community so that they can not only exit poverty, but also for our employers to close that middle skills gap where we fill the jobs that are really needed in our community. By 2021, the Workforce Master Plan will have American Youth Works serving as that insulated pipeline that's bridging our young people to the in-demand careers that our local employers need. I think that the plan will um, provide some of the additional support as we strive to continually build capacity to, to meet the needs of our region. There is completely a synergy between um, this notion of when we have demand for jobs, uh, what are the key audiences that most need to hear about the demand for these jobs? Similarly, when there are spaces available for free or low-cost training programs to take these jobs, how do we get the messages to the people? I think we're just starting to explore how to make those efficiencies more efficient. And so, yes, the broadcast blast will only get you so far. Uh, so, for example, when a partner decides to use our video, send it out, and say, we currently have three slots available in our latest round for HVAC training, sign up today. And, and then that social media includes the link for that sign up. I think that that's really where we're heading in terms of using the social media carefully, using our messages, which we hope are compelling and engaging, but then that call to action is the last piece. Where do they go once they've been informed? And, and that, that's again where I think we're just starting to figure out how best to do that. Success in 2021 would look like doubling the number of nurses that we graduate each year, but not stopping there. And this community, this region is in a very fortunate position of having a dynamic economy, dynamic growth of jobs that are in that middle skill. You need more than high school, but you don't need a four-year degree. We're generating tens of thousands of those positions. What we want from jobs has gone up. The good thing for us is the community college is well-equipped, this one in particular, to equip people for that. So success uh, for ACC in the, the Workforce Master Plan is that uh, we will be recognized as one of the uh, elements uh, or one of the factors that helped solve uh, the career pathway problem for business and industry in Central Texas. So whether it's in IT or advanced manufacturing, the skilled trades, uh, or in the health careers uh, fields, that we, ACC, along with the other partners that are participating in the master plan, that we've done our job well and that we have prepared and that we have transformed the population that is underemployed, unemployed, uh, below the living wages, that we've given them the, the right skill sets to be productive and they're earning uh, better than a living wage and producing. One of the challenges we are working on is making sure that we have enough education opportunities, shadowing opportunities, and internships available for students, whether they're in a high school level or whether they're in uh, the college level. Another challenge for us is marketing ourselves with other industries. When you think of IT, students don't often think of the healthcare industry as being a great place to go to work. Working closely with the schools is probably our best opportunity. Uh, so that we can prepare our students for the jobs of the future and open up more opportunities for hiring students. What success looks like is that we have at least 10,000 identifiable individuals who were uh, low income, low opportunity before this program started and through this program have gone through a workforce development program and have succeeded in elevating their careers to jobs that have real futures and bring them into the middle class, them and their entire family.
I think that our, our key takeaway in all of this is that it really isn't enough to, to have good intentions. Uh, we have to prove up that what we're doing is actually working for the individual that we're seeking to serve. And we can't cream. We can't just look for the people who are easy to employ. We have to look for all of our Travis County residents, including people like returning felons who are otherwise skilled and ready to work, but because of life circumstances in the past, make it difficult for them to get employment. We're leaving a tremendous amount of talent on the table, and we, we've got to reverse that. So as we set to move forward to 2021 and even 2023 for council strategic vision, uh, the economic development department is very focused on workforce development because we're also looking at business expansion opportunities here. There's a common misconception that the economic development department is in place for recruiting a number of businesses into our community. And while we do a facet of that, we're very focused on how it is the businesses are here, uh, can be sustainable and can thrive here in Austin. And that directly aligns with what we would like to see for the individuals in the neighborhoods of Austin as well. And so by addressing business expansion, inevitably you do connect with workforce development and we're very strongly focused on how it is we can provide the workforce of the future here in Austin to retain our competitive advantage as a city. So I think success uh, in the master plan looks like accomplishment of the targets and that workforce solutions has got so much more credibility on trying to solve these difficult problems that they'll be able to align the uh, contracting for other workforce entities uh, in the region, that they'll be able to have a much richer dialogue with uh, higher education providers, uh, and that they'll have been able to reset the targets. We anticipate uh, over the next three years to have an additional 100,000 net new jobs. So uh, we need to look at things that can scale, with fidelity and help provide a lot more people with the training as all of these industries are changing pretty dramatically. I'm very optimistic. Uh, I think a five-year goal uh, is, is wonderful, but I expect to blow right by that. And I think our goal is, is quite modest. Um, it will accelerate as we get closer to the five-year point. I'm sure it's gonna go right past that and then we're gonna not get enough of it. We're gonna wanna keep going as a community. This is unique in the United States. Nobody else is putting the energy and the vision into this sort of idea uh, anywhere. So on the one hand, there's nothing we could do wrong. Uh, on the other hand, the potential for doing something amazing and right is there uh, to be copied by people everywhere. Well, success for this plan in 2021 is when we look backwards and we say, Congratulations, we, we did a good job. We, we moved 10,000 people out of poverty into new middle skill jobs. We were able to move 30,000 people into new middle skill uh, job opportunities for them. Um, that will be a significant measure of success. And then the other one is when we look forward and we say, boy, we did this well. Now let's set some even more aggressive goals and let's, let's keep this moving forward. The next level of success by 2021 is infrastructure development. The first thing we will have accomplished by 2021 is shared measures across our system. Part of having a common agenda is agreeing together on how we're going to measure our success. The second measure of success by 2021 is to have reliable common data sets that move us beyond individual funding streams and that each agency administers. Third is the opportunity to fund differently as a result of data and evaluation and frankly coming together as a community around a common goal, we will be able to identify programs that work and deserve to be scaled on behalf of those who are most vulnerable in our community and at risk of being left behind. This work would not be possible, the successes to date would not be possible without all of the community working together. First and foremost, it, was the, it is and was the Board of Directors for Workforce Solutions that saw the opportunity to lead in our community around a workforce plan. So I'm very grateful that our Board of Directors saw the vision and the opportunity and has adopted the Master Community Workforce Plan as our agency's strategic plan. Secondly, it's all the funders in our community that see the potential and believe that together we can do better. So grateful to all of our funders for coming together. 
Third is our training providers and educators. They are where the rubber meets the road. When we talk about upskilling, we talk about skills training, we could not do it without them. Next, we've got our community-based organizations, those agencies day in, day out, that are finding and reconnecting our job seekers and our students so that they can find those educators and training providers. Last but not least, training is a means to an end. Industry has been a key partner in this work. We know that we are developing a talent that industry will find valuable so that they can find the talent they need to grow their companies here in our local community.